This is the Warmester Town Football Club Supporter Podcast, and I'm your host, Roland Millward. Well, as usual, we're pleased to welcome Jamie House to the podcast. Uh, hi, Jamie. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, very well. And uh, delighted with three points at the weekend. So perhaps you'd like to run through the Warmester Town versus Radstock Town game for us. Yes, we... Uh... Hosted Radstock Town and kind of sort of become sort of become a, a sort of local rival, I guess, even though we're not in the same county. But, you know, um, yeah, we, we ran out two nil winners at Alex Churchyard uh, volleying home from a corner in the first half. I think it was around the sort of 35th minute, 30, 30th yeah, minute, something like that. Numbers. Yeah. Um, Radstock then had a, a man sent off uh, a, a tackle on uh, Braden. Humphreys, I think his name is. Still trying to learn all the uh, the new players' names. Um, so uh, yeah, they they lost a man there, um, which I think helped us out. Uh, we looked a bit more. Co- a second half, we looked way more comfortable, and it could have been a lot more than two nil. Um, at that point, there were a few chances went begging, but uh, Corey Gardner got his uh, second of the season. That's two and three for him uh, in the second half. I think that was fairly early on in the second half, actually. Yeah. Um, to make it 2-0. And then, like I said, there was plenty of chances and just unfortunately couldn't uh, couldn't beat the Radstock defence and uh, it ended 2-0. But yeah, another three points on the board and we're uh, it's looking good. Indeed. And, and at the start of the season, as, as most seasons, then Radstock have always been a much fancied club for promotion. So um, I think for the first half and say, until we scored the goal, it was pretty much even Stevens. Uh, Radstock didn't get any major. I think they had one really good opportunity, but after that, it was kind of an even to and fro up and down the pitch, wasn't it, for a while without any great chances until the goal came. And, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I think they forced one one save out of Carl Crabtree, and I think that was all he pretty much had to do in the afternoon. I think they really bothered our keeper again after that. Um, so yeah, you know, it was pre- it was pretty even and up and up until we, we scored. Yeah, yeah, we must thank Carl for coming down because our two goalkeepers. Were not available. He came down from Newcastle. Yeah, on the books. It's a long way. It's a long way to come to. Uh, come I hope we're not paying him to... forty-five pence a mile. Otherwise, the club <laughs> will go bankrupt next week. <laughs> yeah, you but, can't believe it, can you? The first season we've had. Well, it was second season actually, but we've had we've got two goalkeepers, which is probably more than a lot of teams can say, and they both happen to be away that weekend. <laughs> That's that is life, as they say at times. Isn't yes. It? Well. <laughs> Thanks for that review, Jamie. It was an entertaining game, actually, and, and mm. the crowd was good. 118 this week, mm-hmm. um, which is encouraging, and I'm sure that's going to rise over the coming weeks as the, the holiday season just dribbles down a little bit more and we can enjoy uh, uh, greater crowds. And uh, we actually were the highest crowd, I think, for that Saturday in our division. Yeah, I believe we were, yes. So, again, well done, everyone, for coming along to support Warmester Town. Well, we'll just take a quick break, Jamie, and we'll be back with you to have a look at the match coming up and also the league tables. Did you know that you can follow Warmester Town Football Club on Facebook and Instagram? Find the links on our website, warmestertownfc.com. You'll see them there. Thank you. We look forward to welcoming you on our social media channels. Right, we're back with Jamie. So, Jamie, next match is going to be on Saturday. There should have been one on Tuesday evening at uh, Gillingham, but unfortunately they have floodlight uh, issues and they've, they haven't been uh, readied yet, so they'll, we'll be playing them later on. So, uh, who have we got on Saturday? Uh, we've got uh, one of the new teams, uh, A.K. Boko, are coming uh, to visit Weymouth Street on Saturday. So, uh, that should be an interesting one. They've um, Let's just have a little look at how their season has been going so far. They are currently ninth in the league, uh, having played just two games and won one and drawn one. So um, all to play for. They beat Ormondsbury Mm -hmm. 2-1 last weekend, which, you know, it's a similar score line to how we beat them. So it could be a a fairly even contest. We'll have to see. Yeah. So, yeah, we welcome, welcome having new teams in the league, which is good. And, and how you mentioned the league table. So how's the league table actually looking right now? Well, currently t- at the top, we have Welton Rovers who have 
played three teams, uh, played uh, three games and, and won all three so far. Um, Bishop Sutton are currently second, having uh, played three games and won one, uh, won one, two, and drawn one. Uh, we are currently third uh, with the same stats. Uh, Sherborne uh, are currently fourth, uh, only on games played. If they win at the weekend, they will probably go top because um, they've played two, one, two, and they're scoring goals for fun at the moment um, with uh, a 10 plus 10 goal difference after what two games. So that's just insane. They uh, they beat um, Devizes Town at Devizes 6 1 at the weekend. So uh, mm. yeah, they're very much scoring goals for fun. Uh, Cheddar are fifth, uh, Longwell Green Sports are sixth, Lebec seventh, Wales City eighth, Aki Boko ninth, Radstock Town tenth, Hengrove eleventh, Olden Abertonians twelfth, uh, the Phones thirteenth, Portishead fourteenth, Titherington Rocks and other of the new teams uh, are currently down there in fifteenth. They've won one and lost two. Uh, Devizes Town sixteenth, Old Odd Down seventeenth, uh, Wincanton eighteenth, Gillingham Town. Uh, one of the other newbies uh, yet to uh, register a win, unfortunately, for them. That's a big step up, obviously, from the Dorset League. Um, they're down in 19th. Uh, Bishops Lydiard are 20th, and Almondsbury are currently bottom of the league, having played two and lost two. It's early days yet. We can't. Judge. It is early days. It is very early days. But uh, it's, it's probably going to look a lot different than that at the end of the league. Yeah, we're pleased to be third. <laughs> mm. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll see, see what happens when AEK Boko come along. So a little bit of an unknown quantity to, to ourselves, of course, as to mm. everybody else, not in that way. But uh, uh, it's a quite a name to actually have to say, isn't it? Three letters, AEK. And then we're all saying Boko. It could be Boko. I don't know who's going to argue. We'll, we'll ask them <laughs> when they turn up and uh, we'll see, see how they fare. Indeed. So, Jamie, thanks as well for the photos. Some great photos from the weekend. They've been oh, you're very welcome now, so that's good. And on our Facebook page, and uh, we tweeted them out as well. So, uh, lots of opportunities for people to see some of the action shots that you take from our matches. So, we'll see you on Saturday, then, shall we, sir? Absolutely. Brilliant. Well, take care. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, here's some more footballing news from Warminster Town. Firstly, congratulations to the town reserves who had a charity match on Saturday evening and have actually raised around two and a half thousand pounds for neuroscience. So that's a brilliant amount of money. Well done. And thank you to Warminster United for um, being opponents on the evening and making game of it. Uh, the town reserves actually came out as winners 4-2 but of course, more than the winning on the pitch, it's actually winning for charity in raising such a great amount of money for such a worthy cause. So thank you to everyone involved in that. Other good news that we have in the first pre-season match for the warmest to ladies took place on Sunday when Gillingham Town ladies came across to Weymouth Street and a crowd were entertained to lots of goals. In fact, all the goals were scored by Warmest to Town ladies coming out winners at 11 goals to nil. So well done, ladies. That's an absolutely brilliant start to your pre-season campaign. And we're looking forward to the season starting properly soon when, of course, you'll be in a new league having been given promotion. So that uh, start this pre-season is all good. I'm sure we'll look forward to finding out more. And we're looking forward to interviewing Tim Fry next week, all being well, the manager of Warminster Ladies, and he'll tell us everything that's happening. So do stay tuned and uh, listen for our podcast next week as well. Your club needs you. Yes, our club depends upon volunteers. So if you can spend a few minutes, a few hours, your time will be greatly appreciated. There are many tasks that need to be completed in the daily running of a football club, whether it's on match day or days in between. If you can volunteer your time, please get in touch with our chairman, David Parry, using the email address chairman at warmistertownfc.com. I'll just repeat that. It's chairman at warmistertownfc.com. You'll make a great volunteer.
Well, there goes the final whistle, and that brings this week's podcast to an end. We've hoped you enjoyed the Warmester Town Football Club support of podcast. So before you go, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe using your favourite platform. Thanks for listening.